Have you ever been in a situation where you were at a long spot from your drop zone? It means that you were looking at your landing zone and wondering if you would even make it back? Well, in this video, let's talk about how to avoid being in a long spot situation and how to make it back when you're far from your landing zone. Hey there, this is Catherine Bernier here from Skydive Vibes, sharing the passion of skydiving and helping you become better and safer skydivers. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon to be notified whenever we post videos all about skydiving. Well, since the beginning of the season, I ended up in some situations where I was wondering if I would make it back to the landing area. Those situations gave me a little bit more stress in my jumps and I wanted to share with you what I've learned from those experiences, meaning how can you avoid being in a long spot situation and when you do are in one, how to react to make it back to the landing zone as safe as possible. So first, let's talk about how to avoid being in a long spot situation. First, every day you start jumping and at every jump, really, you want to be aware of the winds, not only on the ground, but also in altitude. Most of the drop zones are often offering you a dashboard where you can see the winds at 12,000 feet, 6,000 feet and 3,000 feet. Those wind speed indications are very useful when you know how to use them. Usually the wind speed at 12,000 feet will give you indications on how much time you need to leave between each jumping groups. After that, the wind speed indication that interests us in this video is the one at 3,000 feet because it's gonna be the one affecting you under canopy. And keep in mind that you don't only need to know the speed but also the wind orientation. And this brings us to the second element you need to be aware of, which is the spot or where you're exiting the plane relative to your landing zone. Spotting the landing zone is something very important to do before each and every one of your jumps. And this applies even though you're the last one jumping out of the airplane. So you should have learned that when you became a skydiver, but before exiting the plane, you gotta make sure you're exiting at the right place according what was discussed underground. And to define that, they are actually looking at the wind speeds just like we talked at the beginning. So the exit point is designed so that the wind helps you get back to the drop zone. So in each of your jump, if you know what are the wind speed and also where you should exit the plane at, well, you'll be able to double verify and make sure that you're exiting at the right place in order to make it back to the landing zone. So when you want to apply that in your jumps, it's very easy. Whenever you are about to exit the plane, make sure to locate the drop zone down below and make sure you are at the right place according to what was discussed and also the wind speeds. On a side note, this was a personal experience where we were the last group exiting the plane and we didn't take time to look at where we were before exiting and we ended up all doing a plan B as we call it, which is landing off the landing zone. So taking a couple of seconds to just look down and see where we are and if necessary, simply ask the pilot to do a second round to make sure you're exiting at the right place because it's always safer to land on the drop zone than somewhere else, of course. All right, so the third element I wanted to share to you in order to avoid landing off is that if you have a doubt on your position according to the landing zone, simply pull higher. This way by being under canopy earlier and higher in altitude, you'll have more time to make it back to the drop zone if you were far away. As a quick tip, as soon as you are under canopy, the first thing you wanna do, of course, is to check if you have a square canopy that can fly properly. Then using your rear riser without touching anything else before, you want to look for the traffic and then orient yourself towards your landing area. That's the first thing you wanna do because you don't want to end up in the worse situation than you were by messing around with your canopy routine while you are getting further away from your landing zone. So before touching anything else, make sure to orient yourself towards the landing zone. All right, so those were four elements that I wanted to share with you to help you avoid being in a long spot situation and land off your landing zone. But now, what do you do when you are in a long spot situation where you're doubting that you're gonna make it back 
to your drop zone. Well, let's talk about some tips for you. In most situations, if you are in a long spot, you most likely are in a downwind situation, which means that the wind is working for you behind your back. So taking that into consideration, what you want to do is you want to have that wind effect plus your forward speed helping you getting back to the landing zone. So for that matter, if you want to increase the wind effect on your wing, you want to stay in altitude the most possible. So knowing that we want to stay in the air the longest possible, we want to slow down our descent rate and improve our glide ratio, which will make us go further. Of course, different canopies and different wing loading will react differently to the techniques to improve the glide. One of the tips is to simply leave the toggle stowed and let the canopy float as it is. You can adjust the orientation by giving small inputs on the rears or also with your harness. The goal is to not give too much inputs because by doing so, you're gonna lose altitude, which is what we don't want. Another technique is to unstool your brakes, but then giving a little input on the rears to flatten out your canopy. Again, the goal is to slow down the descent rate and have the wind push us forward the most possible. Another technique, depending on the situation, is to leave the brakes towed, but then give that same rear riser input. It all depends on the canopy and your wing loading. So try to test those three techniques and see which one will give you the most performance. Like I said earlier, try to orient yourself while you're in this position with your harness, not to give any hard inputs with the toggle because each input will give you drag and then make you lose altitude, which will leave you less time to make it back to the drop zone. In that situation, again, drag is your enemy. So to help out, you can also raise your knees up to your chest so that you're reducing the drag of your body and trying to make it more efficient forward. You can also collapse your slider again to reduce the drag. Lastly, I want to tell you that landing on the drop zone is secondary to landing safely. So if by a thousand or 800 feet, you figure out that you're not gonna be able to land on the drop zone, it's time to choose a plan B or another landing zone. Avoid obstacles to the maximum, plan your landing pattern according to the winds that you should be aware of. There has been a lot of jumpers trying to push the limits and trying to land on the landing area and ended up having serious landing injuries. So it's really important to land safely first. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanted to let you know that you can now support Skydive Vibes in its quest to share more about skydiving and also by supporting Skydive Vibes, you will enter a monthly giveaway. So each month amongst all the supporters of the channel, I'm going to be giving away skydiving gear. So I'm really excited about this opportunity for you to support the channel, but also for me to give back to you with more content and sick skydiving gear. And that if you want to watch other videos from Skydive Vibes, simply click here and I'll see you in another video. Blue skies.